If there was only a single animal body plan, which could accommodate life on land, it could be argued that variations within populations of aquatic animals might never achieve terrestrial existence without an intelligent design. Our understanding of diversity has demonstrated that there is no such limit on the adaptability of aquatic organisms. A great variety of aquatic organisms have modified their originally aquatic design for terrestrial life. The invertebrate lineages which have modified their ancestral and aquatic body plan for terrestrial life include diverse worms, snails, slugs, and a number of arthropod groups including centipedes and millipedes, scorpions, spiders, a variety of crabs, and the ancestors of insects such as Devono hexapodus. Among fish, there are a variety of lineages which can venture onto land for brief periods with a variety of adaptations for breathing air and terrestrial locomotion. These fish would undoubtedly evolve greater adaptations for terrestrial life were it not for the diversity of modern terrestrial vertebrates that limit their success. The Ripidistian fish which evolved into the first amphibians did not develop the only possible suite of anatomical features which would allow life on land. They simply evolved one of many possible sets of terrestrial adaptations. For example, frogs can vary in their size, shape, whether they possess tongues, whether they have a voice, the length of their tongue, whether their tadpoles feed, and the amount of poison in their skin. Different species have developed different modifications to conserve water, including skin waxes, enlarged bladders, cocoons for dormancy, lymphatic glands, and the ability to urinate a powder. Chromosome number can vary significantly within a group of closely related frogs. Adaptations for aquatic, burrowing, and arboreal lifestyles have developed independently in separate groups of frogs. Some can actually glide using webbing between their digits. Adaptations for burrowing can include dry skin, clawed digits, extra bony elements which adapt their feet for digging, a bony plate on their backs, modified body shapes, and instinctual burrowing behaviors. Toads are not a natural group, since the adaptations for terrestrial life, often implied by the word toad, have evolved independently within separate frog families. While most toads are predominantly terrestrial, but in Suriname toads are almost inquirely aquatic. The methods of reproduction in frogs vary considerably. Egg clutches range in size from only 3 to more than 5,000. Parents may carry eggs or tadpoles on body structures which include the legs, back, back pouches, groin pouches, duct, cul sac, and stomach. About 600 species from nine different families undergo direct development, passing through the tadpole stage while in the egg and hatching as an adult. Different forms of parental care have evolved separately in different groups of frogs, including mechanisms for nourishing the young while developing inside the body of the female. Significant differences exist in the reproductive cycle of salamanders, even within a family. Although the ancestral life cycle seems to have consisted of external fertilization, egg laying, aquatic larvae, and terrestrial adults, many salamanders have modified their life cycle to include internal fertilization, complex courtship, direct development in the egg to a terrestrial juvenile, live birth to aquatic larvae, live birth to directly developed young, and aquatic adults. Adult lifestyle can vary, even within a single family. Species of the family Plethodontidae have developed a diversity of habitats, including underground burrowing, terrestrial surface dwelling, arboreal life in treetops, and fully aquatic lifestyles. The lungs have been reduced and even lost independently in separate lineages. Size can vary considerably. The smallest salamanders are a little more than an inch, larger than five feet in length. Some species are considerably more thin and slender than others. Other variations include clawed digits, the absence of limbs at hatching, the reduction of limbs to tiny vestiges, fusion of the digits, retention of larval features in adults, skeletal variations, and the reductions of eyes in cave species. There are significant differences between the families of Sicilians, a group of legless amphibians from tropical regions. Body length in Sicilians can vary between 7 centimeters and 1.5 meters. Some are slender, while others are stouter. Some species possess more than 200 vertebrae. The earliest Sicilian fossils are known from the Jurassic period and, unlike modern Sicilians, possessed legs. Other variations in Sicilians include the presence of a tail, 
the presence of scales, the number of rings per body segment, a presence of sensory tentacles, the position of the mouth, a bony layer over the eye, the lack of an orbit, the reduction of the eye, the number of lungs, and the existence of internal nares. The most primitive Sicilians lay eggs, which hatch into aquatic larvae and mature into terrestrial adults. In some species, the larvae do not pass through an aquatic stage and undergo direct development. About half of modern species give birth to live young that are nourished inside the female's body. Through